Jen Fulweiler. So happy to have you with me here this afternoon. My website is thejfshow.com. It's been a great show. So many interesting conversations. I am delighted to have our friend Bree Sokolowski back with us from the south of France. Tough life. He missed seeing a real live rattlesnake at my house by a day. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, you and your fiance came over for dinner last night and we had no scorpions and no rattlesnakes in the house. And I, I thought I thought that was keeping it really classy. Well, yeah, we had what fantastic brisket. We had ribs. <laughs> and I should say it was takeout. Because I, I, I said, I said, Brees, we are going on vacation. We're leaving Saturday. And I said, I just, I can't. I just can't with the, the I, I can't cook. But it was good, right? We got good barbecue takeout. It was fantastic. And th- let me tell you, the banana pudding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with a bucket of banana pudding. No, but you brought it. Yeah, it was a bucket. I mean, these these barbecue places in Texas do not play with their banana pudding. You brought an apple pie, and it was different than any apple pie I've ever seen. It's up on Instagram stories. People can follow me there. I'm Jennifer Fulbyler, one word. Click on my little profile picture, and you'll see the story. It was just sliced Apples. It it was yeah. It, describe a, this. It's a really simple. Now we're getting we're getting the cooking show. The cook. Yeah, cook, I know. No, we're talking about fundraising. With, no, 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 no. Give no, me no, two I, minutes I, for no, pie. No, yeah, absolutely. No, it's fantastic. It's a really simple recipe, and I, I actually can walk through. I can walk it through within like twenty seconds. Yeah. So, I mean, all you do is you you go to the store and you just buy one of those pre made um, crusts. Crusts. And what you do is you buy you buy some flour, you buy some eggs, you buy some sugar, and you buy some apples. If you want to get really cool, which I like to do, is you buy like four different kinds of apples with different types of uh, colored skin. Oh, yeah, you did that. I noticed. And you just thin slice the apple, and you buy an, a banana. So you slice the banana, you slice the apples nice and thin. And what you do is you first put the, the bananas on the bottom. Like you, you slice them up and you, you just cover the bottom of the, with the um, bananas with the bananas first, so okay. it gives it kind of nice, a nice little flavor. Then, then you do, yeah. Look on Instagram. You, you kind of like design. You fill the inside of the um, of the crust with the apple slices, but with the the skin upward. Yes, so it it has it has like a colorful wheel effect. It has a yeah. colorful wheel effect, and then what you do is you kind of like make a custard. So you put like um you put no matter how you weigh the eggs, and no matter what the weight of the eggs is, you take that weight divide by two. So you take the half of it, and you put um, sugar and flour. Oh. So you take the eggs, you take the sugar, you take the flour, you mix it up. You have a bit of a custard, and you just kind of you layer it lightly on top of the crust, like on top of the. Um, the apples and then you just put in the oven usually it takes about 20 to 30 minutes pump it all the way up to 400 degrees or whatever the max is so it just really heats it because yeah I, that's the way i like to make it if people were to google this what is it called french apple pie yeah french apple pie okay it's it, it's something different it's different than american apple it's different pie. Than american it's apple. this would be a good one to bring to a potluck or something it's very fancy and it looks a little healthier because you can really see the apples it was great breeze thank you for bringing it to my house so we've talked about the importance of living in walkable communities and, and, you know, we should think about kind of trying to replicate that if you don't live in a walkable community. We talked about just marriage and the Catholic single life. Let's move on to fundraising. You're, you're a person that I can talk about to a, a wide variety of issues, and, and I love this. Now, again, for people listening, this interview is relevant to you, I promise, even if you do not work in fundraising, because at some point, whether it is for your kids' activities, whether it's for a ministry at church, you are going to have a situation where – you need to ask people for money. Now, hopefully this will be for a good cause. You really believe in your kid's band mm. or, you know, maybe you um, maybe you have a – maybe you're an entrepreneur and you have a business and you are creating great products and you just have questions about how you can kind of reach people. Reese, it's interesting that your website is catholicfundraiser.net and yet the – tips that you put out there like and you've got a free ebook there at the website uh the 10 commandments of catholic fundraising i mean these are universal principles it's not only things that apply to catholics so why did you decide to do catholicfundraiser.net as opposed to just doing general business consulting just kind of in the secular wider world well I got involved in Catholic fundraising. One of my great claims to fame is I'm I, I I've only taken one 
fundraising course in my entire life. Nice. And that's as much as I want because I got out. <laughs> I, I, I left with what I with what I all I need was like okay, this is just like way too bland, way too secular. And even though it, even though it works, I'm gonna I'm not I'm not gonna say it doesn't work. It does obviously it does work because most people are using it and they're and you know they're raising a lot of money and they're happy with it. But I thought there's got to be a better way of doing it. And there was they were fundraising in my parish. I found that there were professional fundraisers. You know they had slick little um, booklets, picture of the Pope, some quotes. <laughs> you know every every Catholic has been has experienced that. You get the nice little booklet. You know, print it on really nice paper, thick, and you have the pledge card and, you know, the way they wrap everything. At the end of the day, we know what they want. They want some money, which I, I can understand. But, you know, the whole, the approach kind of like just kind of cringed me because, like, it wasn't it wasn't enough Catholic. Like, it's very hard. Like, you know, you, you, either, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You just, like, Catholics want to give. I want to get every- Do you think so? Now, I have heard, I, I've heard from people who work in various nonprofit worlds. They say, man, Catholics are stingy, man. They, they don't, you know, you've got the Protestants, they're tithing, but we Catholics, like, they, they just don't give. What You work in Catholic fundraising. What is your impression? I, I think, it, you know, Catholics, we... I, I, I don't know. We're a community. And if somebody's from the outside or, or, or something doesn't smell completely Catholic, we're like, mm, you know, like yeah. we kind of walk away. Yeah. But when something, I have, I am working with some incredible, amazing Catholic organizations. These people are doing such beautiful work, saving lives, saving souls, especially in the pro-life in um, sector. And these people, they are getting tons of donations really like i have one really? lady says oh she sends me these random emails oh i got another check for a hundred thousand dollars as if it's oh nothing my gosh. as if it's not but, <laughs> uh, uh, but obviously she's very blessed and she's very thankful but she's saying look this is just how we operate we're just we're just catholic and i think and i think when you have outsiders saying catholics are a bit stingy it's just we 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 we, we, we can smell you a mile away man yeah and if you're if you're false or if you're not, false not, yeah. and i mean the, the word catholic it, it's like you know, we're kind of. Lo- I don't know. I don't know what the right word is. Maybe it's brand, but you know, it's it's it, it's tainted a lot. Like, oh, we're a Catholic organization, and you just look at. You know, you you kind of ask a few questions, and you know, well, are you pro life? You know, are you you know, do you, do you like the magisterium? You know, do you, do you pray together? All these little things, and you know, the it, it, the things start to fall away, and you recognize, well, apart from the name, you're not really Catholic, or maybe the roots were Catholic, and then now, you know, the people that are working in it aren't. You know, and it's not to say that Catholics can't work inside Catholic organizations, but it's it, so for me. When somebody says Catholics aren't generous or they're less generous than other people, it's just that our our, our, our level of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Our standard is extremely high, and if you're going to say you're Catholic, you better walk it. Yeah. And that's and that's for me is what inspired me is that I was seeing some fantastic Catholic organizations that were already doing really good work, but we're just kind of like doing their own thing with fundraising and I thought well do you want to try a little can can I help you a little bit and I came from as a Catholic perspective and I say look I'm Catholic you're Catholic let's focus on the mission and let's try and add a few things um, that might make your I don't want to say professional but just make things more simple than organizing like you you run an event you know how hard it is the Adele gathering yes indeed I mean it's, <laughs> it's beautiful it's hard well yeah and, and Reese let me jump in to say again your website is catholicfundraiser.net you've got a free ebook there you're always happy to have conversations with people who are maybe they don't even know where to start they don't even know what they might need and you're very generous with you know the advice that you give and, and things like that so you say that you know it's you you want to start with focusing on the mission do you find that a lot of organizations or businesses entrepreneurs you know whatever don't know what their mission is yeah it's 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 the starting point and when i started working more with catholic nonprofits and i was trying to help them with their mission i was more and more speaking as well to like individual Catholics that they might have not been doing like a nonprofit thing, but they were doing something that was very faith focused. And the the topic, the, the initial topic was always like, okay, you want to raise money? Why? So what? If somebody's going to give you money, so what? What are you going to do with it? And they were like, well, because I need money. Like, why? And it was coming back. And most of my work in the beginning, about eighty percent of my work is is all about the why. Yeah. Why is why? God? Why is God calling you to ask somebody for money? Right. And it stops a lot of people, which I'm glad it should be because I don't think 
Um, if you don't know the why, you shouldn't be asking anybody for money. Um, yeah. It, and, you know, let, let's take it to a, a simple example that everyone can understand. But I think this applies to whether someone owns a coffee shop and they're hoping to get people to visit it or whether people have a mission. Maybe they have a, a, a pregnancy center or, you know, something like that. So let, let's use a simple example, but that can apply to all sorts of different things. Let's say you have a kid who's on a baseball team and you know how now all our kids have the fundraisers that they have to do. And, you know, they might go knock on the neighbor's door and say, hi, I'm, I'm Timmy. I'm on the baseball team. And the way most of us pitch these kind of things, whether again, as parents or as ministry organizers or whatever, we tend to kind of, you know, we knock on the door, talk to a friend, and we feel sheepish about it. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just, oh, I've got to kind of ask you for some money. Timmy here is on the baseball team and they need money. So I don't know. Do you want to maybe get some chocolate? Maybe, you know, something from this catalog? And who wants to give? You know, it just sounds like a burden. Like that just doesn't sound compelling. Now imagine if you knock on the neighbor's door and you say, hey, this is my son, Timmy, or maybe Timmy explains this himself. He says, hey, I'm on this baseball team. It has really inspired me to stay more focused, to do better in school. I have seen kids on this baseball team who were about to fail out of school, mm -hmm. and then they got involved with this organization, and suddenly they feel like their life has a purpose, and it's teaching them to be more focused on their goals, and we're all doing better in school, and our team is about to win, and could you maybe support this? And and by the way, we have this catalog that has you know, different chocolates, different things you can get. So you're getting something cool out of it too. Well, then you want to write a check. That's yeah. inspiring. But Brees, it fundraising of, of any type, getting customers, whatever you want to call it, it always starts with the why. Why are you doing this? And I am amazed by how many people, they start asking for money before they have answered that question for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know what else to say. And but and you see that a lot, right? Didn't you say like eighty percent of what you do at at first is just helping people figure out their why? Yeah, like th there was this one man, a fantastic, a fantastic friar. I was speaking to him, and you know, he he had a beautiful idea for a movie, and he wanted money. I'm like, well, why do you need money to shoot the movie? And he's like, well, I need all this equipment. I'm like, well, why do you need all this equipment? He's like, well, in order to shoot. I'm like, but I was like, well, like, how big do you want it to be? Like, like he was like, I just, I, and in the end, he was like, I just want to film it. And I'm like, well, you, you, you just need an iPhone. <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, you know, but in the end, the reason I say that is because he, he was like, I want to get something. I want to show people what it's capable of doing. Yeah. And I'm like, I was like, well, then just shoot something and start inspiring people. Yes. But don't yes. say you need the money in order to film something to get people inspired. Yes, 100%. So again, people can look you up at catholicfundraiser.net. I really encourage people to contact you, even if they're not sure that you might be able to help them. You are very sweet. You're very generous with your knowledge and, and your advice. I might make you a pie as well. <laughs> I know yeah, they, you might, you might, or you might invite invite them to visit you in the south of France. Yes. You, know, you never know what could come when you contact Bree Sokolowski. So catholicfundraiser.net is his website. And so this is, your advice is exactly what my husband says, because he's an attorney attorney and he's done business law and he says so often he'll get people who are starting businesses and they're very excited about it mm. and they're ready to you know give my husband all this money and say oh we need contracts and we need stacks of forms and all of that and my husband will say have you sold a single product yet wow. and they'll say well, no, you know, we're still kind of thinking about that. And my husband will say, look, you know, always happy to <laughs> take your money, but I, let me give you some advice. You don't need to pay me right now. Yeah. First, just go out, follow your passion and get some traction. And yeah. then when you actually have some customers, when you actually have some sales, then come back and talk to me and maybe you'll need some legal forms and whatnot. And, and I think it's the same thing with fundraising. First, do something simple. Like you said, shoot a little movie with your iPhone, put it up on YouTube, see if that gets traction before you go raise $500,000 or whatever and find out that, that, that people actually weren't interested in this particular mission. And Bree said, you know, to go back to this idea of are Catholics generous? Do Catholics donate? I, I think that 
you know, the people I know who are, you know, generous patrons of, of different causes, they are more than willing yeah. to share their blessings, to share their financial blessings, but they're also savvy. And most people I know who, again, have financial blessings and, and are, are known for sharing them, they've had a few hard lessons, you know, where maybe they wrote a significant check to an organization that was very inspired, but didn't know its mission, didn't know mm. its why. They end up burning through a large sum of money and just don't really have any results because they had more passion than they had purpose, you know? And that puts you in a really big diff- uh, uh, big hole because if somebody gives you a big check and you're like, yay, fantastic, and you go off and all of a sudden you burn it without, you know, putting really anything delivering, else yeah. delivering anything, next thing you know is like, well, you, you've built all this stuff and then you don't have any more money to continue it, so you're even a bigger hole before. So it's better to start out small, yeah. attract people's attention. What I always talk about is get people's attention and then get their trust. Yeah. Like that before you even ask anybody for money. If you can't do those two things and those things don't cost any money and it's very easy to get people's attention. You've got social media. I'm a big fan of YouTube, Instagram. Um, just do some, get the word out. Um, I'm also a big fan of email. If you don't know how to, if you don't want to have money to be printing things and handing them out, just use email, get a website. Websites cost nothing, people. They cost <laughs> nothing. Um, and even, even on my on my blog, I, I I like list all the different free resources to build a website. You don't need something super fancy. Just get things up and running, get people's attention, and then start building the trust. And that th- that actually is a bit difficult because it's people are like, well, who are you? Why should I listen to you? And why should I believe in what you're doing? But the second you can do that, when you do ask them for money, they're like, well, yeah, you caught my attention. You, I've got, you got my trust. I believe in you. I'm more than happy to give you something. And the great thing is, is when you come back, you say, look, I did this with your money. We're moving forward. You know, would you like to make another donation? They're like, absolutely. And that's where you get, you know, really moving forward. Yeah. And, and that is the, I, I like what you say about start simple. Whatever God is, is calling you to do, mm. to start simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't go, as my husband would say, don't go hire some attorney, you know, the first minute that you get an idea. Don't, st- you know, immediately start asking for fundraising as soon as the idea comes to mind. And by starting simple, it will help you refine your mission because my my husband and I know tons of entrepreneurs. We know tons of people who have started amazing ministries. And what you tend to find is in those early steps, your mission becomes refined. A lot of times the, the organization that you end up with is not the organization that you initially thought you were going to end up with. And you can alienate a lot of potential donors, but potential funders, if you're, if you jump into it too quickly. And so it, and I think it really allows God to work as well, because let's say you, you do stumble onto a mission or a business idea that has traction. Well, frankly, it gets kind of, noisy once you've got mm. big money donors coming in or some sort of big funding you know you're out there let's say it's a catholic organization you're having an impact you're serving thousands and thousands of people well at that point you kind of feel caught up in this sort of wave i mean it, it's hard to discern exactly where god wants you in this organization to be and that's why it's great to start small start simply so that you can kind of tease out what god is really doing here through this organization well i mean just look at what how jesus started started out. I mean, yeah, he started from the point. ground up. And, yeah. You know, God <laughs> himself, so <laughs> you know, the, the ultimate of like, how, you know, how to start something, you know, small and make it big. And he even taught the, the apostles to just go out with nothing. Yeah. And you're going to be able to succeed in your mission. So this whole concept, I've got to have this, I got to have that. I like, Time no. and time again yeah. in the Bible, you don't need anything. If anything, Jesus, <laughs> God makes you leave everything that you have. So that, because he knows you're going to be distracted. You're not going to be, you're going to be like, ah, I need this. I need that. And like, God knows, okay, we need to, you really need to just, you need to trust me and you just need to, 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 to get, get down to the basics. I love that. Yeah. Look, look at Jesus's model. Start really small. All right. We need to take another quick break and we will be back with more with Breeze Sokolowski. You can look him up at catholicfundraiser.net. I really encourage you to do so. And we will be back with more after this. Jen Fulweiler, so happy to have you with me here this afternoon. We've had a fantastic chat. We are speaking now with Brees Sokolowski. Look him up at catholicfundraiser.net. Brees, in about the minute that we have left, I want to tie in to something that Sammy Murphy was saying in hour one about how, you know, sometimes God will give us a talent, a charism. We want to share it, maybe even turn it into a ministry or like with Sammy, a singing career or whatever the case may be. So Brees, 
Final one minute word of encouragement. If someone out there is listening, they feel like they have something they might need to share. It might turn into something, but they're afraid of failing. It, you work with so many ministries, businesses, that kind of thing. As, as an expert, you know, who's, who's seen it all, what's a, a little word of encouragement for that person? I mean, uh, my word of encouragement really is literally go to my website, <laughs> catholicfundraiser.net, <laughs> because it is, it is tough out there, but it's not to say it's impossible. Just go to my website, download the ebook, The Ten Commandments to, to Catholic Fundraising, whether you're doing no, a nonprofit work, if you're a, a Catholic trying to do something in, in the faith or incorporate more of your faith in your work, just go to my website and, and just stay in touch with me because you, you, you go, when people stay in touch with me and they see like the, what I'm doing on a weekly basis because I'm keeping people up to date, what I'm doing and the different organizations that I'm helping, it's inspiring them to just keep moving forward because we're going to have a bad week. We might have a bad month, but you just press on and know you're not alone. So just really stay in touch with me. Yeah. And, and again, you are very generous with, with your advice when people contact you. CatholicFundraiser.net is your website. You've got a free ebook there. People can just get to check out 10 Commandments of Catholic Fundraiser. And Brees, you know, you see so many of these organizations and they're doing great work. And I love it that you share that. So, Brees, when do you return to the south of France? Um, I believe my flight, uh, August 22nd. So uh, I was on the road for a little bit longer. September or wait? October. October. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you go back go, in time. Going there. to the okay. West Coast. Right. Then I'm going to New Zealand and then flying uh, through across Asia, back to the other side of the world, back to France. Your life boggles my mind. I really want people to follow you also. Brice, it's spelled like Bryce, B-R-I-C-E, Sokolowski on Instagram. And I will be back with y'all tomorrow, 2 to 4 East, 11 to 1 Pacific, here on The Jennifer Fulweiler Show. You're listening to The Catholic Channel.